months out from UTA and COVID still has the better of me. So apart from resting and being patient, training feels largely out of my control. What is, however, in my control is organizing my mandatory gear for the race. So here's my thoughts on selecting and packing the mandatory gear for UTA 100. UTA is very explicit with the details of their mandatory gear and all that information can be found on their website. The full list of my specific gear is in the description below. But my thoughts on gear selection is this. Minimal weight always. Obviously your gear needs to be fit for purpose. And so I'm not talking about cutting corners. Rather, when faced with the decision of purchasing a hooded, waterproof, breathable, seam sealed jacket, I chose the lightest one possible. And now taking this attitude for all of your mandatory gear adds up. And over the course of 100 kilometers, those weight savings are not insignificant. The downside of this approach is that it inherently comes with a bit of a cost penalty. Now I'm a gearhead deep down at heart, and so justifying the expense of investing in quality gear was pretty easy, but know that it's gonna cost you a bit more money. <laughs> when packing your mandatory gear, uh, there's two things to keep in mind to help things go as smooth as possible. A pack that sits comfortably on your body can be the difference between having a great day out and an absolutely horrible race. All of the soft items like your thermals, your high-vis vest, and your jacket should be packed as flat as possible and sit directly on your back. I use Ziploc bags to keep my thermals dry and flat. And if you're able to pack them with the label visible without opening, it'll help you breeze through any on-course mandatory gear checks. Then the smaller, harder things like your headlamps, your phone, and even your food, uh, I like to stash in the pockets up front. Uh, they sit nicely there, buffered from your chest by your soft flasks. The last tip to keep things nice and comfortable might seem counterintuitive. You want to pack all of this gear into the smallest vest possible. It might seem like having a 12 or a 20 litre vest is a nice contingency plan, but not only do those packs weigh more, the extra room is only just encouraging your gear to bounce and shift around more as you run. A full pack is a comfortable pack. Whatever you decide to be the most comfortable distribution of gear, remember that. So when the need arises to retrieve an item, you know exactly where it is. Ultra marathons do horrendous things to cognition. And you'd be surprised at how difficult it is to find your headlamp if you don't already know exactly where it's gonna be in your pack. <laughs> Being organized in how you pack your gear is such an easy way in making sure you have the best race possible. And that's it, getting this stuff dialed early, like now, will give you plenty of time to make good gear selections and iron out any of the kinks in packing a comfortable and organized mandatory gear carry. Then the only surprises left for the race is realizing how much it actually friggin' hurts to run 100 kilometers in the bush. <laughs> uh, hopefully this was interesting or helpful. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. <laughs>